Hey everybody, it's Christine up today with the scrap room and I am using the flavors of the month kit and I am using the Vicki Booten page kit using making use of all those great colors that Vicki really absolutely just rocks every time. So this page you can see the bottom is kind of a mixed media look and then the top is mixed media look too but it also has that sunburst look. I am going to make use of that sunburst so I am trimming the bottom off and then I am going to cut each of those sunbursts along the line not worrying too much on if they're perfectly straight and such because I'm gonna distress them a little bit um, but I'm gonna cut them down and then I am going to put them back together on my base now right now you can see I've got a black base out I'm actually gonna switch over to a white one because I feel like the colors got a little bit it just got too dark um, kind of drowned a little bit and with white it worked a lot better. Now the other thing to note is that I am going to be using the jump start sketch again today. So this is my third in the series of scrapbook sketches 103 where every time I scrapbook this month I am using the same sketch. Now if you're looking at this right now you're going okay how does a sunburst fit into that sketch? Well what I did is I created a background and then I used the sketch. So basically I'm kind of recreating a patterned paper, if you will, and then um, using the sketch and I'm gonna scale the sketch down significantly. So you will see how it comes together, um, but if it's not making any sense to you right now, that's okay. <laughs> um, I want to show you how you can use a sketch all month long and do different things and um, lighten your creativity load, if you will, on those months when you need to. And so I think it's really important for you to see like how you can take it with just about any layout and make it work. Now speeding ahead, I've got all of those cut out and I am going to reattach them in the same order onto my white cardstock. Now I am going to replace my Easy Runner Grand, the tape runner, with some dot, a dots runner because I've got really thin um, edges on this, on the bottom of each starburst piece. So I wanna make sure um, I don't have to tuck tape and all that stuff. So the dots allow that. Um, they only stick to where you put it. Um, and they work great for things, especially like this. Now, re-adhering this was a little bit tricky, getting them back on there um, exactly right. It was actually trickier than I expected. But um, I tried not to work too quickly. So the speed you're seeing at right now is sped up times two. Um, but I tried to make it, I didn't push down too hard. I tried to make it so I could realign things if I needed to pull them back up, etc. And so what you're seeing is really me <laughs> applying, reapplying, applying, reapplying, trying to get those on there just right so that it will all fit back together the way it started <laughs> which if you're wondering like why didn't you just leave it alone christine well you'll see in the end that i do some things to it to distress it and add dimension and it really does add to it and make sense um but yeah it's a little tricky in the meantime that said that's part of the process right um putting the puzzle back together or putting the puzzle together to start with to have a really cool effect take place. So one of the things I do love about this collection is she's got just so many great colors. So you really could take nearly any picture with bright, vibrant colors and make it work. You definitely don't have as many pastels. So like a really light picture might not work great, but pretty much anything like your kids or your family is wearing any darker color or bold saturated color will definitely work. Now, as a reminder, the scrap room has four page kits in the Flavors of the Month kit. This is just one of them. You can head on over to their page on Facebook or their Instagram page to see examples of all the other page kits as well as what people are doing with them. Additionally, you can see what everybody else has done with this page kit. So all the other designers have used the exact same stuff as me. And you can see what they've done with it that if this isn't your style at all, might they might have something that's more your style or 
if you just want some more inspiration, um, it's great. So you get to see, you know, four or five gals working with this page kit and all the other ones specifically so that you can just get filled up with lots of ideas and maybe you merge all of them together. Maybe you just take them for inspiration and do your own thing. And then the other fun thing is you can join the scrap room group on Facebook and you can share your own inspiration with people. So that's a fabulous feature as well. So now I've gotten to the point where everything is back on there and I am distressing it. And all I'm doing is just pulling up one edge on it all the way around. So you can see I'm just pulling up that top edge, um, which on the opposite side will be the bottom edge, but you see what I'm saying. Like I'm going and doing the further edge up um, and just pulling it up. And with the white underneath, it'll show a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, it just, you know, it just complements it. It doesn't make it overwhelming that there's another color or another pattern underneath everything. So I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way around and then I will really begin to build the layout based on the sketch. Now I talked a little bit about the scrap room already. I just want to point out you can go to their website, check out the kits. You can go to their Facebook page, check out the kits. And if you do decide to join, let her know you came from me. Um, she always likes to know like how new subscribers pop up, whether it's from a video or from a friend or whatever. So just keep that in mind. She's a great lady, small business, and she does a great job curating these kits each month for us. Um, one of my favorite, well, probably, honestly, my favorite monthly package that I get. Uh, not that I get too many monthly packages, but I do get some other subscriptions, and this is just one that I always look forward to seeing what's in it. So now let's take the sketch and build it up. So it's a two picture sketch. So I've got my two pictures. My daughter is in a black shirt with some neon colors. Perfect. And then I'm going to layer the different patterned papers from this page kit to mimic the sketch. Now you can see I have scaled it down significantly and I am not I'm making it smaller. I'm not going to follow the sketch to a T. Um, if you are looking for me to have followed the sketch to a T, go back to my last episode. So episode number two in this series, I do stay very, very, very close to the sketch. Um, but this again, gives you an idea of how you can scale it down, whether it's scaling it down on a 12 by 12 layout or on an eight and a half by 11 layout, or even a six by six or eight by eight layout, um, all very possible or Again, if you want to do something cool with your page, you can um, scale it down and have the background be a little more of a focus than the sketch taking up the whole page. Now I am going to pop this part up because I've already got the dimension in my sunray in the back and so I want to make sure it rises up a little bit. Now it's time to go ahead and embellish and add my title. And this is always a little bit of a trickier part, especially when you've created a unique background. So I'm just pulling out all the ephemera and seeing what of that would work. I also have a sticker set. I have both the flavors of the month kit and the embellishment kit that I'm working with today. So um, extra embellishments. Now I love this saying, be colorful, uh, because I just think it applies so well to a teenage girl and of course, her shirt is also quite colorful, and so it works great for that. The whole page kit um, and the collection really have an artistic theme, so I can see doing some really cool stuff with this um, regarding like your creativity, your scrapbooking or your hobbies or that kind of thing. Um, I can definitely see it working really well for that, um, but definitely not exclusively either. So, got my title on there pretty much in the same place as the page kit calls for, or I'm sorry, the sketch calls for, and now I'm going to do some embellishing. Now, this part was really tricky for me today, um, partially just because I'm scaled down and the ephemera is pretty big, but also just because, I don't know, it was just tricky. I just struggled with it a little bit. So, this is kind of a unique thing that I'm going to do, but I'm actually going to put that arrow right there in between the pictures. You've probably never seen me do anything like that because I 
don't generally do anything quite that bold. Um, but I'm kind of liking how it looks there. So I am going to go ahead and stick with that and add it in. And then I'm going to use the arrows, uh, some arrows from the sticker sheet to be further embellishments and really work in that group of threes. The cardstock sticker sheet has some foiled arrows on there and they're curved arrows so they will work really nicely for helping to frame the picture and so that's how I'm going to use those. You'll also notice that I used some powdered paper along the bottom to bring in that starburst effect as well as some color just down there. So seeing now I've got those arrows on there you can see how they draw the eye in to the pictures and I've got three of them on there so that works nicely but definitely a very different look from my normal style. Now my final things that I'm going to add in is going to be some flower pieces and some journaling and some mist splatters. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the ephemera in this collection, it, it's big. Um, and because I've got scaled down pictures, scaled down sketch look, I needed smaller. So I went ahead and cut apart this set of three flowers um, and made it into three separate pieces. And then I still follow the sketch where I place them, but they're not quite so huge and overwhelming. Um, would totally work great if I had scaled everything up in size, but I didn't. I scaled it down, and so I needed to make those work for my design. So as you can see at this point, complicated kind of background, but a very simple picture and title set. Um, which is thanks to the sketch it makes things a little bit easier creatively as well as it also just makes it faster i didn't have to figure out where i was going next and to be quite honest it kind of changes the look of how i do things um, makes me stretch myself a little bit outside of my norm so that is always a fun aspect of doing these series where i work with one sketch so adding on my journaling i am just adding this simple little stuff about my daughter. I don't generally do a lot of journaling on the front of my layouts because I like to keep it private and it doesn't always work in my design and so I just put it on the back. But in today's case, I felt like it was a layout that has kind of a graphic style and it just really, really called for journaling. And so I decided to make sure and work that into my design today. Not, definitely not saying that the journaling is not important on a regular basis. I just have a different approach to it than some others do. Um, that said, I've got it on there now and I'm gonna underline the words individually. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just put some black mist splatters down at the bottom and that will be it. So be sure to swing by the scrap room, check out the kits for this month. And next weekend I will have a new layout using the same sketch for, with the double shot kit. And later this weekend I will be using the same sketch for a simple stories layout. So be sure to swing back by my channel later this weekend and we will see you again next time.